In today's experiment, we're going to be determining the molar mass of butane. And of course, to get the molar mass, we need to know two things, the mass and the moles. The mass is the easy part. As our source of butane, we're going to be using a butane lighter. And all we have to do to get the mass is to weigh the lighter before we collect our sample, and we'll weigh it again afterwards. So that's the easy part. Moles is a little more complicated. We can't really measure the number of moles directly, so we're going to use instead the ideal gas law. We're going to collect a sample of butane gas in a 100 mil graduated cylinder so that we can easily get the volume. The temperature is simple enough. We can get the temperature from the thermometer that we have in our water bath. And the pressure, of course, is essentially going to be whatever the pressure is in the room minus whatever the water vapor pressure is in the uh, container. And we'll talk about in detail during the pre-lab video about how to do the calculations. But basically, once you've weighed the lighter initially, all we have to do is immerse the cylinder into our container of water and get all the air out of it. And then we simply clamp it into our clamp and just like you may have done when you were kids, if you ever were washing dishes and you had uh, taken a glass of water and inverted it in the sink, you notice the water doesn't flow out of the container because the air pressure outside is pushing the water up in. All we have to do then is simply put the lighter underneath the opening and push the valve and you'll see bubbles of butane rising up in there. So in the lab, we're going to head over to the lab in a couple of minutes, and we'll do this experiment a couple of times. We'll add enough butane to get between 90 and 100 milliliters of gas, and then using the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, we'll calculate the number of moles using our mass of the lighter, both before and after the experiment. We'll have our grams and simply divide those two, and that will give us our molar mass. So, before we get into the lab, make sure you watch the pre-lab video that talks about how we'll do all the calculations. Then we'll head on over into the lab and we'll get to work. In experiment 18, we're going to be determining the molar mass of butane. So, molar mass is simply the number of grams in one mole of any substance. So, to determine the molar mass, we really just need to know two things. We need to know how many grams of the substance are in a particular sample, and we need to know how many moles of the substance there are, and then we can simply divide those two, and we end up with grams per mole, or the molar mass. For our source of butane in today's lab, we're going to be using these disposable butane lighters. Now, you'll notice that the butane in the lighter is actually liquid but it's only liquid because it's under pressure. Butane actually boils at 0.5 degrees Celsius, so just above the freezing point of water. At room temperature, of course, which is around 20 degrees Celsius, butane would normally be a gas, but in the lighter, it's under pressure. And many gases, if you put them under pressure, they will form a liquid. As soon as we push the valve and release the pressure, the liquid will begin to boil and butane gas will be formed. We're going to collect a sample of the butane in a graduated cylinder. So we're going to invert this graduated cylinder. You've done this type of thing perhaps when you've washed dishes. If you take a glass and put it in the sink and then you invert it, the water doesn't run out. Once we've filled it completely with water, we'll just hold the lighter underneath and allow the bubbles of butane to rise up and that will push the liquid down and we'll do that until we've collected somewhere between 90 and 100 milliliters of butane. To get the mass of the butane is relatively simple. We're going to weigh the lighter initially and then once we've collected the sample, we're going to dry the lighter completely to get rid of any water, and we'll weigh it again, and the difference between those two masses 
will tell us how many grams of butane we collected. So that's really the easy part. To get the moles of butane, we can't get that directly, so we are going to use the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law, as you recall, is simply PV equals NRT. So N is what we're going to be looking for in this particular case, and that means we need to know pressure, volume, temperature, and the gas constant. We can simply rearrange the equation then to solve for N. When we collect our sample of butane, because it's passing through water, some of the water is going to evaporate into the cylinder as well. And that means that not all of the molecules of gas that we've collected are actually butane. Most of them will be butane molecules, but there will also be some water molecules present as well. So we can't assume that the pressure inside the cylinder is completely due to the pressure of butane. A small amount of it will be caused by what we call water vapor pressure, which is essentially caused by the evaporation of water. Fortunately, that's something that we can easily take care of. If we want to calculate the pressure of just the butane, we simply measure the pressure in the cylinder, which is essentially atmospheric pressure, normally one atmosphere, and then we'll look up in the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics or online and find out what the vapor pressure of water is and so simply subtract that from the total and that will give us the pressure of the butane. The volume is simple enough. The graduated cylinder, we simply read it. We're going to fill it down to between 90 and 100 milliliters and we will simply use the meniscus to measure that volume. And for the temperature, we'll be putting a thermometer into our water bath, and we can assume that the temperature of the butane, having passed through the water, will be essentially the same as that temperature. And finally, of course, we need the ideal gas constant, which is given. And from those values, we can then calculate the number of moles of butane, and then using that and the mass, we can determine the molar mass. So let's go ahead and run through a sample calculation like you might be doing in the lab. We have a butane lighter that initially weighs 15.67 grams. We collect a sample of butane in our graduated cylinder and it has this volume, 97.3 milliliters. We then dry the lighter thoroughly and weigh it again, and we find that the final mass is 15.43 grams. So for those two masses, we'll be able to get the mass of the butane. Using a thermometer, we determine the temperature is 22 Celsius, and the pressure is one atmosphere. We've looked up the vapor pressure of water at 22 degrees Celsius, and find that it's 0.026 atmospheres, so all of that information will allow us to determine the molar mass of butane. First, we'll do the mass. That's the simple part. We'll just subtract the final mass of the lighter from the initial mass, and we get 0.24 grams. To get the moles, we need the pressure. And as we said earlier, we can simply subtract the vapor pressure of water from the total so this will give us the pressure of just the butane in the cylinder. The volume we already measured, and all we have to do is simply convert milliliters into liters, since the ideal gas law is always in liters. And the temperature, of course, we measure with our thermometer, and we simply add 273 to convert that into Kelvin. Now we can go ahead and plug in our values. So we've got our pressure, volume, our gas constant, and our temperature, and that gives us 0 0.0039 moles of butane. So now we have the grams of butane from subtracting the two, and we have the moles of butane. All we have to do is divide those two values, and we get the molar mass. 
So it, come, it came out relatively close, within a few percent of what the molar mass of butane actually should be. You can, of course, calculate that from butane's chemical formula, C4H10. All right, let's go ahead and get the initial mass of our lighter before our first trial. All right, everything is set up to collect our first sample of butane. So we'll go ahead and take the graduated cylinder. We'll immerse that in water and then we'll tilt it to get all of the air out of the cylinder so it has nothing but water in it. And then we can invert it and the water will remain in the cylinder due to the outside air pressure. Go ahead and get that clamped in and making sure we leave enough space at underneath so we can get the lighter in there. All right, it looks like we're ready to go. So we'll put the open end of the lighter underneath the cylinder and begin to collect the gas. You can see the bubbles of butane moving up into the cylinder and displacing the water. It's probably going to take at least a couple of minutes to collect our 100 milliliters or so of butane. Now to save some time, I'm going a little bit of time-lapse video here. So you can see the butane filling the cylinder very rapidly right now. And then once it's just about to where we want it to be, we'll go ahead and slow things back down again. All right, let's take it back down to normal speed now. We've just about got our quantity we need. There, we're just a little below 100 milliliters, so that should be perfect. Now, when you're measuring the volume, it's best to have the water level in the cylinder close to the water level in the trough, and that keeps the pressure equal inside and out. So we'll adjust that just a little bit to try to get those levels as close as we can. Yeah, that looks good. So let's go ahead and measure that volume. Let's zoom in on the graduated cylinder here and get a measure of the volume. We definitely got it between 90 and 100. So record that volume in your lab book. All right, um, we've collected the first sample of butane, so now we have a wet lighter. We're gonna need to make sure we get that dried before we get our final weighing. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna shake it. There's probably water in here. Oh yes, and I shake it, I can see lots of drops of water coming out. So we'll try to get most of it out of there. And then we'll use this heat gun to dry the rest of it. We'll probably have to dry it two or three times until all the water is gone. Now the trick is we don't want to overheat the lighter, so the easiest way to avoid that is to make sure your fingers are in the flow. If your fingers get too hot, the lighter is probably too hot. As long as your fingers don't get burned, then the lighter should be perfectly fine. So we'll dry that for a few seconds. Now we'll go back and weigh it, and then we'll dry it again. We'll do that three or four times until the mass of the lighter remains constant and then we'll know it's completely dry. All right, I've dried the lighter for the first time. So let's get the initial weight here. And now we'll go ahead and dry it again and see if the weight continues to decrease. I've dried the lighter a second time, so let's see if the mass has changed. That looks like it's dropped a little bit. So let's dry it two or three more times until it's a constant weight and we'll get a final value. I've dried the lighter three more times and the mass has now leveled off. It, it's been the same for the last two weighings. So this will be our final mass for trial number one. The last thing we need to do is to get a temperature 
for our calculations and it looks like the temperature is right at 20 degrees Celsius. Now let's begin our second trial. We'll need to measure out the mass of the lighter initially before we collect our sample of butane. I've gone ahead and set up the graduated cylinder to collect our second sample. Now once again this is going to be a rather slow process so I think we'll fast forward for a little bit till we get close to the end and then pick it up again. Now we'll run this at about eight times normal speed, sort of do a time lapse, and then when it gets close to the uh, 90 to 100 milliliter range, we'll slow it down and then finish things up. We're getting close now, so we'll slow things back to normal speed, and it looks like we've got just shy of 100 milliliters, so we should be good to go. This is the volume of butane that we collected for trial number two. All right, I finished collecting the second sample of butane, so we're going to need to dry the lighter once again. So, as usual, we'll shake it. Oh, lots of water coming out of there. We'll try to get all the loose droplets out. And we'll go ahead and again use our heat gun, making sure we don't overheat the lighter. Keep in mind it's full of highly flammable butane gas, so as long as it doesn't get hotter than my fingers, we should be good. So again, we'll dry it several times, and once we get it dried to a constant mass, that will be the final mass of our sample. All right, I've gone ahead and dried the lighter for the first time, so let's get the mass after one drying cycle. And now we'll go ahead and dry it several more times until it reaches a constant mass. After four dryings and weighings, the mass has stabilized, so this will be the final mass of our lighter for trial two. Let's just get the temperature once again for trial two. It looks like it's still 20 degrees Celsius, so you should have all the information you need now to complete the experiment.